Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. One of the things that we can say virtually across the board with everybody that has ongoing narcissistic characteristics and it becomes a way of life for them, these individuals are pain generators. And it's not just true that they have a maladaptive pattern of life. I mean, yes, they do. But their maladaptive pattern of life has consequences for other individuals, and that would include you. Now, one of the things that I find, and this can be so egregious and crazy making when you're on the receiving end of this, one of the things I find is that these pain generators who have created consequences for you that are very difficult will then come back and say, you need to drop it. You need to let it go. You need to forgive. You need to move on. I don't know what's wrong with you, but uh, you're, you're just holding on to something that doesn't need to be held on to. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, I've spoken with, uh, with uh, individuals who've been on the receiving end of physical abuse. I had one lady whose, uh, whose boyfriend threw a cell phone at her and broke her nose and part of her cheekbone, and she had surgery. And the only thing that the guy could say was, how long are you going to hold on to the grudge? How long are you going to be mad at me? In other words, uh, I've created pain. You need to just forgive me, move on, and, and uh, let, let's get this behind us. And she did by getting him out of her life. Or another person, has uh, a, a man has an extramarital affair for a long period of time. It's discovered by family members. And then after about three or four months, the family members still don't have all of the difficulty out of their system. But his comment is, Where's grace? Hey, come on, don't we all make mistakes? And you need to move on. Let, let's let's get uh, get this behind us. We have a life to live. And they're over there thinking, I'm still hurting. Or you can have somebody uh, that uh, uh, I had a, a man who's who had a sister who in their 50s confronted him about sexual abuse that had happened during their teens. And it didn't happen just once or twice. It was a, an ongoing kind of thing. And she finally, after her own therapy, got the gumption to say, hey, we need to talk and we need to come to terms with what happened. And his only comment was, what's in the past is in the past. You probably don't have a good memory anyway. Get over it and, uh, and let's just move on. I mean, these are some uh, very common things that I would hear in my counseling office. Sometimes they can be large and exaggerated. Sometimes it's something where uh, the narcissist has done something a little less egregious, egregious than that. But their notion is you are holding on to a grudge. You are the problem. You need to move on. Quit trying to tell me that I've done some things wrong and, uh, and, and let's just move on. You need to forgive. And that can be such a, um, a smack in the face for you uh, uh, figuratively. Uh, and what we have here is we have someone who is trying to lecture you about having a better sense of integrity when in fact it's their lack of integrity that set up the frustrations that are there in the first place. I mean, that's what I mean when I say it can be crazy making. And then to throw salt in the wound, you know, what they'll do is they'll say things like, uh, so are you supposed to, are we supposed to think that you're without flaws, that you've done everything right? And they can kind of flip it around and try to take the focus off of who they were. Or like that one guy did with his sister, they can say things like, hey, look, what's done is done. You can't change everything. Let's just move on. And all you have to, uh, all you can do is uh, focus on what's ahead of you. Or they can say something like, you're taking something and making it bigger than it has to be. When you're thinking, no, it's big, and, and I'm not making this up. And it's gaslighting, yes, uh, but it's, uh, it, it's an indication that that, uh, uh, that narcissist who's saying, leave it alone, forgive me, uh, get on with your life, uh, that person has just lost their own sense of moral compass, if they even had one in the first place. Now, let's underscore, uh, that person is saying, you have a moral obligation to forgive me. And, and what they're doing is they're trying to call in chips where, you know, they certainly wouldn't do the same in reverse, that's for sure. 
If you are being called upon by that person in particular to offer forgiveness and it's simply done out of duty, it's done because it's a requirement, it's done because you're supposed to do it, it's not going to work. It's not going to solve any kind of problems and you're certainly not going to feel right and it's not going to fix whatever difficulties were there. First things first, uh, when, th when that narcissist uh, says, I, I, you have to just forgive me, move on and, and let's get this behind us. That individual doesn't just want you to let go of your memories. They need you to let go of your, manip uh, of your uh, memories. These are master manipulators and they're only concerned about themselves. And when they require you to, you know, to uh, respond to them in their way, they're still in their manipulative mode. The bottom line is your pain is real. The bottom line is all the emotion that goes along with it is something that uh, can stay for quite some time. There are times when people will have flashbacks uh, and they can, uh, they can have dreams about some of the strains and difficulties which can represent their unfinished business. And so for you to be told, get rid of it, it's just dishonest. And uh, frankly, there are times when that narcissist has brought that pain to you that you may wind up living with what I refer to as a psychological limp for the rest of your life. And so let's underscore, that person who inflicts pain upon you in an egregious way and then flips it around and says, you're the one who owes me forgiveness, has zero, and when I say zero, none, no right to say, Here's, uh, let me explain to you what you need to do for me. And, and, and uh, let's take that off the table. Now, when you're in a situation like this, where sure enough, something really large has happened based on what that person has done, I have one concern uh, for you that I, that I hope that you can work through. And that is, I simply don't want you to be trauma bonded to that narcissist for the rest of your life. Uh, the narcissist should not have the final word about your concept of your own self-worth. That narcissist should not have the final word about you being able to have a healthy and good quality of life. That's my big concern. And so when we say, I'm hoping that you can come to terms with some of the flaws that have been brought into your life because of that person's gross insensitivities, it's less of a, uh, of a mandate and it's more of a care and regard I'm hoping that you can recoup a sense of control over your life that that narcissist ta has taken away from you and that you can be in charge of your life trajectory from today forward. So with that having been established, let's see if we can figure out uh, some of the things that you can do that can be part of the letting go process. And, and frankly, I don't care if you call it uh, unhooking or disengaging or forgiving because the words uh, themselves are, are words. I'm looking at the process of what you can go through that can help you get away from the, uh, uh, the, the difficulties that the narcissist has dumped into your lap so that you can move forward. Now, the first step that I'm hoping that you can take is do not lecture yourself because you're struggling. The, the narcissist is already doing that. Uh, they're kind of wagging their finger at you saying there's a certain way you're supposed to respond to me and that's not it. Don't you dare do that to yourself. It would be strange if you didn't struggle. The narcissist has their self-driven re uh, reasons for not wanting you to have your problems. But for you, let's just have a sense of honesty that says that it comes with the course and I'm going to allow myself to, uh, to have the emotion. I'm going to allow myself to have the struggle and, and I'm not going to be in any kind of rush to hurry up and sweep it under the rug. A second thing that you can do for yourself, <clears throat> and that is drop the illusion that you can actually uh, fix the, uh, the narcissist's wrongdoing. And that's a big one. You know, there are many times when you can think back and say, well, I just wish they hadn't done this, or why did they have to think this way, or what in the world was in their mind, and you can just kind of go back and obsess about some of the things in the past. But the bottom line is, you can't go into you know, days and weeks and months uh, back on the calendar and rewrite all of the, uh, the script. There it is, and so you drop the illusion that you can make that all go away. It, it simply is a part of your personal resume now, unfortunate as it may be. <clears throat> Instead, and you've heard me say this before, 
and that is focus on how today can unfold. And, and this is you uh, beginning to reclaim your sense of control. I may not be able to control what happened last week or a month ago or 15 years ago or when I was 14 years old. I may not be able to get rid of all of that. But today is my one day that I can do something uh, with, and I'm going to concern myself tomorrow when tomorrow shows up. And then a fourth thing that's going to be part of your healing is you, uh, accept the truth that you do, in fact, live in a broken world and you, you live with broken people. You yourself have broken feelings. That narcissist brought a whole lot of chaos, as you now know, and, and unloaded their chaos onto you. And a corollary to this is, and sometimes your world just doesn't make sense, and you don't have to make it uh, make sense. Uh, there, there's a certain amount of mystery that there is there. It's like, sometimes I just don't know how to explain the why, um, but I accept the fact that there it is. And also, number five, and this may sound a little strange, remind yourself that bitterness and contempt towards that narcissist is an option. You can do that. Uh, now, as you think about those as options, you realize, well, what I would do is I would be holding on to the poison that that narcissist has placed on the inside of me, and it's going to remain on the inside. And then in addition, you'll wind up uh, having more and more of the characteristics that might uh, uh, mirror where the narcissist is. And you want to ask yourself the question, is that what I really want? You have a reason, if you want to, to hold a grudge, but do I want to have all the consequences that would come with that? And then we're going to take it to point number six, and that is I would encourage you to think like an accountant. <laughs> and what I mean by that is uh, the accountant, when they're looking at, uh, let's say, debts that need to be paid off, and then the person over here is bankrupt, may say, sometimes say there are some debts that simply can't be repaid, and sometimes the requirement is to remove it from the, uh, the debit sheet and, and move on knowing that you, you've had to take a loss, but sometimes you take a loss so that you can move forward. So like I say, if you want to call it forgiveness, if you want to call it unhooking, or if you want to call it detaching, uh, the, whatever word you want to use, I'm okay with that. But I'm hoping that you can remind yourself, I refuse to allow the exploitive narcissist to write the final chapters of my life's scripts. And then uh, when, uh, when you look at where the narcissist is, you remind yourself that person's uh, final demise is the fact that they have to wake up every day and look at themselves in the mirror. In the meantime, I'm going to choose to look at me and I'm somebody that stands for self-respect, true virtue, and honor, starting with those thoughts toward myself. So I hope that videos such as this can give you some good things to think about as you're trying to, un uh, to uh, unfold from these kind of situations. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. We're going to keep more videos coming towards you. I hope it has a cumulative effect as you continue to watch them. Also, if you have a need for therapy, and, and when you're dealing with something like this, it can be very essential. It's so nice to be able to say, I, I have a therapist that understands me and is helping me walk through the process of going through that. I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. There's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that can be that uh, go-to person for you. Please, uh, there's a link below. Uh, get the assistance that would be essential for you. In addition, I also have courses that I put together that uh, can be very thought-provoking. Each course has uh, at least 25 videos with written documents per video, lots of guided questions that kind of walk you through the process. We have Ready, Set, Connect about having healthy connections. Uh, this is me about establishing the boundaries that are so essential. Free to be, finding yourself despite those controllers. In addition, on my website, I have my webinars that have been presented, 90-minute presentations uh, that are still available there, along with uh, access to our podcast, many articles, my books, plenty of resources. Okay, and the narcissist can have the audacity to bring their pain into your life and then flip it around and do the victim shaming and say, you're the problem because you won't let it go. Uh, don't buy into that. Remind yourself, my, my task right now is for me to be a friend to me, and I'm going to make decisions that are going to help me and my own mental health, and, and as you do so, I'm hoping it allows you to think I'm going to get my eyes focused on what a steady me looks like. And, and what a, uh, an emotionally balanced me looks like, pluses and minuses, because ultimately I'm hoping that you can live into your own place of peace.